Don't fall for this common Waruto mistake. At first glance, Waruto appears to have a face following camera mode. If you select orbit mode when you move, your character stays close to the center of the screen. But the movement may look a bit weird to you because rather than follow you from a fixed point as though the camera is mounted on a tripod, the camera both rotates and moves at the same time. Watching this effect can be slightly unsettling. Face following cameras are highly realistic, but the way orbit cam moves is a bit off. This gap between reality and a close imitation of reality is called the uncanny valley, and it gives some people a sense of discomfort that can be hard to put your finger on. But don't worry, there's a better face following camera option, and I'm going to show you how to set it up. To get started, first go to the Waruto workshop, search for camera rig, locate Feline's camera rig, and click subscribe. Next, add a new camera to your scene and position it so that it captures as much of your character as you want. For beginner users, it's perfectly fine to have a dedicated follow cam in addition to your other cameras, but if you hate the idea of having more than one camera in your scene, I'll also show you a more advanced setup after the basic one. Now, click the plus button again and scroll down until you see the camera rig asset. Choose the camera you just created and then check out the target options. These are the game object assets in your scene, broadly the things you can drop in and move around like characters, props, and anchors. Let's try choosing character and then clicking the Make Camera Look at Target button. Well, something happened, but not what we expected. Instead, click Lock Look, which will force the camera to continuously obey the camera rig. But oops, it's focusing on the character's feet. Why is that? Well, it's because most characters' root transform is on the floor in between the character's feet. But really, we want the camera to focus on the character's head. Your instinct will probably be to use this look at offset here. Let's try it. I know my character's about 1.1 units tall, so I'm going to put that in, and that looks nice. But it's still not following my head movements. That's because most face trackers don't move the root transform when animating the character. And because the camera rig is targeting the root transform, if it doesn't move, the camera doesn't move. So how do we make the character's head targetable? We need to create a game object asset that follows the character's head. Click the plus button and scroll all the way down to anchor. You should probably name it something helpful like head anchor, but I forgot. <laughs> Don't put anything into transform, but under transform attachment, choose character, then human body bone, then head. Now, as you can see, you have an asset that perfectly follows your head movements. Back in the camera rig under target, choose the head anchor. Yay! Now the camera smoothly follows your face just like a real face tracking gimbal shot. No more uncanny movement, just smooth, happy tracking. And a cool parallax background effect, I might add. This is the end of the basic setup. You can switch to this tracking camera and switch back to your other cameras as needed. Having multiple cameras in the scene doesn't really impact performance much, unless they're all outputting virtual cameras or spout senders, but they don't do that by default. But if you want to have a super clean scene with only one camera in it, here's how to rig multiple shots on the same camera. In the camera rig, under Views, press the plus button. I'm going to make the first one this shot right here, so I'll name it close up, set the head anchor under target, and then press the capture current view button. This saves the current settings, including field of view. I'm a little low in the frame, so I'm going to add a tiny bit of offset, and now it's perfect. Click plus again for another shot, turn off lock look so you can reposition the camera, set up your next shot, and then press capture current view again but my head is smack in the middle of the frame. And for this one, I wanna see my full body. So I'm going to properly set the target and then add a big offset so that my entire character is in view. Finally, let's say you want a shot where the camera doesn't move, such as a corner shot for gaming scenes. Turn off lock look again, set up the camera position and click capture current view. But for some reason, it's still tracking me when I turn lock look back on. Check to make sure your target is unset. If there's no target, there's nothing to follow. Perfect. Now that we have three views, how can we switch between them? 
Let's make a blueprint. Go to the blueprints tab and click the plus button. Name it something obvious like camera controller. Now, there's lots of ways to trigger actions in Weirudo. The biggest one is on keystroke pressed, but if you have a stream deck, there's also on stream deck trigger, and for advanced users, there's on websocket action, among many, many others. The node for the camera rig is called trigger camera rig slot, so grab one of those too. Select the camera rig, and in this slot field, it doesn't detect what you named the slots, only their order, so try to remember the order they're in. Connect your trigger of choice, and then copy and paste the two nodes until you have enough for each view. Computers start counting from zero, not one, so slot zero will be your first view, one will be your second view, and two will be your third view. Give each one a unique keybind, and then test them to make sure they work. Now you have some face tracking gimbal shots, some fixed shots, and you can switch between them all by pressing a few buttons. If you liked this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel, and feel free to check out my other Weirudo tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time!